recording now. We are recording. Uh, welcome to the Union of Python Coding. Uh, uh, we are very pleased to have Waiki Tong to uh, a, a show us a, more about new scenes. Uh, in short, it's towards the road towards autonomous vehicles in the future, but why is much more an expert, so why? Please take take the uh, presentation and uh, present yourself and tell us more about uh, what you're doing towards autonomous vehicles. Thanks. Thanks very much, Jacob, for the introduction and for inviting me here to, to uh, show you guys uh, a little demo of new scenes. So uh, just a brief uh, introduction about myself. Uh, I'm Waikit. Uh, I'm from Motiono, uh, which is a company which uh, is in the autonomous driving space. And uh, one of the products that we actually have out there is uh, something called Nuisins, uh, which uh, would be something that I'll be talking to you guys about and giving you a demo. So um, right now I have a Jupyter notebook that is open. Uh, at the same time, I've left a link in the chat, uh, which leads to a collab notebook of, the, of exactly the same uh, tutorial. So um, if anyone's interested in like following along during the demo, uh, yeah, you just click on the link. Um, everything uh, there is set up already. So uh, yeah, you can, you can go. So it makes it easy for you to follow along if you if you wish to. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, if there's no other questions, I, I will jump right into the tutorial for, for now. Um, so yes, so the, uh, the, the product that we have out there right now, uh, one, one of many, uh, it's called New Seeds. And Nuisins is basically uh, a data set as well as a uh, dev kit. So uh, the, data, the data set itself is basically uh, comprises of uh, uh, 3D bounding boxes. So um, basically you can imagine, uh, let, me, let me see if I have a picture here. So um, okay, maybe we can come to that later. But uh, yeah, so basically the data set is like, uh, we have 3D mounting boxes uh, for you know, a variety of classes. Um, and we also, uh, and one special thing about it is uh, it's a multimodal data set. So uh, there is a camera, there is LiDAR, uh, we have even radar as well within the data set. And basically uh, we, and we don't we don't just provide like the raw data. We also uh, build a, a software development kit on top of it to make it easy for users to uh, navigate through the data set as well as to visualize uh, what we have within the data set. So um, to to just give everyone a little uh, gentle introduction to uh, the the database itself. So we'll start with the database and then we'll go into the a little bit of the dev kit. So uh, with the database, uh, there's just a couple of terminologies that I want to introduce to everyone. So um, we can start right uh, right here. So this is our schema, and uh, it looks in intimidating at first, but uh, yeah, one, once you get into it, it's actually pretty simple to understand. Um, we can start right here at the top, which is uh, a scene. So a scene basically like what? Uh, its name suggests is basically uh, you know uh, a, a little snippet in time uh, in the data set. Uh, generally, we have it about twenty seconds within new scenes, and um, each scene is basically comprised of uh, samples. And you can think of samples as basically uh, individual frames within the scene. So, um, in in like the terminology of like a video, right? If you have a twenty second video. Uh, a sample would basically be, uh, you know, the frames within that video. And so that's for the sample. And for each sample, uh, we have something called a sample data as well. And so like what I mentioned at the start, uh, Nuisins is uh, a multimodal data set. So we have, th we have uh, three different types of sensors, LiDAR, camera, as well as radar. So the sample data basically corresponds to each of these uh, sensors, as well as uh, uh, and we then, for example, we have like you know uh, a bunch of cameras. So each camera gets a sample data as well. And within the sample data would be, of course, the data of the sensor itself. So for cameras, there will be images. For uh, lidar, that would be like the point clouds, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and then uh, coming back up to sample, and then moving on to the sample annotation. 
So uh, this is the, I guess the 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 meat or the the fun part about uh, the the of any data set, which is basically the annotations that come with it. So um, yeah, with the annotations, it's basically uh, for new scenes would be three uh, D bounding boxes. So for example, if you know you have a pedestrian in the scene, uh, you would be able to get yeah we we would have a box you know uh, drawing uh, we have a box drawn around it uh, saying that this is a pedestrian. And uh, we not only provide like uh, uh, boxes as well as the class, we also provide uh, something we call attributes. So attributes can be, uh, you know, whether the, for example, the pedestrian is sitting, whether the pedestrian is moving, uh, whether a vehicle is uh, parked or whether it's moving, uh, et cetera, like that. Uh, yeah. So basically, this is like a, a brief overview. I, I, I won't go through every single portion of the schema just because like, it may get a bit too uh, in the weeds. Uh, yeah, but the main uh, gist of it would be summarized by this, uh, basically this uh, five things here, which is uh, the scene, the sample, sample data, sample annotation, and the attributes. Yeah, so um, yeah, before I move on, uh, are there any questions? And I'll ask something to make people more comfortable a little bit. Uh, uh, but uh, you said that you have bounding boxes, uh, but there's bounding boxes for additional information. Like you said, the person. So the person is not exactly looks like a box. You probably put a bounding box and say there's a, uh, some some tag on it that there's a person. Do you, do you have additional resolution inside that you can put in the annotation things about the person or something like that? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a good question. So, uh, at the so yes, at the basic level, we have the the box as well. Uh, we have the box, and uh, if you want like a greater resolution, right? We actually have another product called uh, Panoptic New Scenes, where we actually label every point that is on the pedestrian uh, as to you know whether the point belongs to a pedestrian or or not. So, if you want something even greater resolution, that would be uh, something to to check out as well. Okay. And uh, what types of uh, machine learning algorithms or just algorithms in general would uh, be best to approach this type of data? Mm. Uh, so it's uh, okay. It's a little tricky to, uh, to answer that just because it's a multimodal data set. So uh, it really depends on the modality that you want to work with. So uh, if let's say you're just interested in um, you know the working with camera images. Uh, uh, you know, you could apply some sort of uh, image-related uh, detectors on them. Um, with LiDAR dataset, it can be a bit uh, trickier. So uh, LiDAR dataset, uh, we actually provided a baseline when we released the, uh, the when, when we released new scenes, and it was called Point Pillars. Uh, uh, and basically, uh, with Point Pillars, what we do is basically uh, uh, kind of like pillarized to, uh, yeah, it's not proper, word, but yeah, pillarized B basically like, um, if you imagine your, your point cloud, uh, you, you, you grid them up and then basically, uh, uh, each and each and within each grid in the XY plane, you imagine extending like a, a Z, uh, axis to infinity. So that becomes like a pillar. And then, uh, you know, you can feed this through like a sort of like a point cloud, um, encoder. And then uh, a backbone, and then like you know a detection hit. So um, it will be slightly different from how you would approach like a camera-based uh, detection problem. Okay, thank you. So yeah, depending on the type of uh, data you're looking at, will depend on the type of uh, algorithm to use with that data. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so. Uh... Yeah, so moving on. So um, for anyone who is running this in Colab, uh, we actually have everything set up for you in terms of the data set. So um, yeah, if anyone's on Colab, you just need to uncomment uh, this line. So just remove like the uh, the hashtags uh, and just give, the, give it a run and uh, everything will be downloaded and stopped. Um, so for me, I'm running it locally on my computer, so I would just skip this step. But if anyone needs like, time to to do this setup, just uh, yeah, just give me a ping and uh, yeah, we can we can wait for a bit. Should be pretty fast in terms of the setup, a few minutes or so. I'm gonna put the uh, the link again to the call of the one you provided in, because some people join and I'm not sure that they see it in the chat. So this is the link that we gave us. Uh, 
if you're interested, you can go there and follow whatever he's doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks very much, Jacob, for uh, repasting the link. <laughs> Some people came in, they may not see it. Ah, ahead, okay. Sorry. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, so this is the collab part. Uh, if, yeah, so once again, yeah, if anyone needs some time to install that, just let me know. Um, if not, I'll move on to uh, basically uh, using the dev kit. So, uh, like I mentioned, no since you can think of it as uh, broke, uh, comprised of two parts. One is the data set itself, which is basically, you know, raw data. It's like, um, you know, your X, Y, Z of the box, uh, the the center of the box stuff like that and then uh we also have the dev kit which is uh rep, which allows you to wrap around the data set and actually move through the data set and visualize the data set so um what i'm going to do now is basically initialize that data set and uh to, to do it it's actually very simple it's just a one liner here uh once you import nuisance it's basically uh telling it like what's the version that you want to uh to load up so in this case i'm going to load up a mini which is basically uh, like its name suggests, it's just uh, a mini subset of our full data set. So uh, uh, yeah, and and then, because our full data set is huge, it's like a 1000 scenes. So you can imagine that's a lot of data in terms of bounding boxes, uh, camera images, LiDAR point plus, et cetera. And so that's for the version. And then for the data root, this is basically telling uh, the the new scenes dev kit like where your data lives. So for me, I, I just have it at data sets new scenes. Uh, it can be anywhere you know you, you like on your computer. And then lastly, uh, verbose equals true just means like you know you print out some stuff when when it's loading just to give you some basic statistics about the uh, the version of the data set you're loading. So in our case with the mini data set, we have uh, ten scenes. So you can imagine it's uh, yeah, just a really tiny subset of our full data set of 1,000 scenes. Yeah, and then you know we have uh, yeah, uh, we have a couple of um, sample annotations. So these are basically the bounding boxes that we talked about, and yeah, a couple of other more um, uh, statistics about the the mini data set. Okay, so uh, so now just going to bring it around to uh, like a kind of recap of what we we had in the in the when we talked about the schema so basically now uh, you get to see it like in action like you know what's what's happening uh, in the data set so uh, if you remember we started with a scene so a uh, scene is basically uh, in our case in new scenes it's a 20 second uh, uh, 20 second uh, set of frames yeah and within uh, this new scenes uh, this mini split of the new scenes uh, yeah we we actually uh, have ten of them, and in terms of annotation, we actually have you know a description of what the scene is about. So this makes it like easy for someone to uh, you know to kind of like without having to look at the the data yet to actually kind of imagine you know what what's going on uh, within that scene. And uh, we have users who are uh, who find this quite useful. So for example, some of them like to um, would like to find like night scenes. So generally, like you know. Having a description here helps to helps them to like pick out which scenes are relevant for their own use cases. And here we also list like you know the location where uh, the scenes were taken. So uh, within new scenes, we actually have uh, both Boston. We actually collect data in both Boston and Singapore. And uh, this is quite interesting from a data set standpoint. Uh, and one of the reasons being you know uh, in Boston and Singapore like uh, you know. Uh, the 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 drivers drive on different sides of the road, so uh, that makes it that, that also kind of makes it challenging for a, a machine learning algorithm to like learn this difference in in the left hand drive versus right hand drive. Okay, and then uh, we're just going to randomly like pick a scene. I'm just going to use like the you know the first scene here, so uh, uh, as as an example. Uh, so here we can expect to see you know some construction going on, some park trucks. Uh, it's going to be an intersection. So uh, yeah, this one's a it's a fun scene. It's one of my favorites actually. Um, yeah, and okay. So and then with the scene, we uh, within each scene, uh, if you, if you recall, uh, each scene is basically made out made out of samples, and uh, we're just going to load up uh, the first sample here just to uh, see what's in it. So uh, with the sample. Uh, yeah, and loading the the sample is uh, yeah, basically as simple as just you know going uh, calling the my scene um, variable and then saying like you want the first sample token. So uh, yeah, very straightforward. And then um, yeah, and then to view the data that comes with the sample, uh, 
we we have this thing we have this very convenient method within new scenes called get so you can um get you know many things so for example here it will be sample you can even you know get scene you can get sample annotation uh, which which i can i can show you guys later on as well so in this case uh we're, we're going to use the get method to uh call a sample and just take a look at what's within this uh sample and yeah so you can see a bunch of information here uh, so I wouldn't go through each of these in detail, but uh, I think one thing I want to just draw attention to would be uh, the modalities that we have. So um, if you remember, after the sample comes like the sample data, right? And sample data is basically uh, what you're seeing here, which is the data that belongs to uh, each of the uh, sensors that we have uh, on the car for that particular uh, for that particular sample. And the other thing of uh, something worth highlighting would be the annotation. So uh, the other thing that uh, if you remember the schema as well, uh, we have the sample annotation. So this is basically a list of uh, IDs for those uh, annotations uh, for that sample. So you can see very busy scene here, a uh, very busy sample here, uh, a lot of uh, annotations going on. <laughs> and we will take a look at some of them later on as well. Okay. And then as well. And uh, we also provide some methods in terms of like uh, listing, you know, the the samples, uh, the like to I guess to put it in a more to to print out like you know the sample date the information related to that sample more uh, neatly. So it can be a bit hard to view all this, uh, but you know with this method you can actually see things a bit better here. It's got the list sample uh, method. I I think I I heard something on the on the. The call was, is that a question or? Uh, I don't see any question, but uh, right. maybe I'll, I'll ask you, you're showing the scene. Is there a way to actually visualize what the scene is so people <laughs> see better what it's all about? Yes, definitely. Uh, so I, I I will come to that later as well. Uh, okay. For now, I just wanted to like take a run through like um, the 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 schema and like how it uh, how it looks like within the, the dev kit. Okay. Go ahead. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so almost done with that. So like the next part would be the sample data. Uh, so uh, just a quick refresher. So the sample data would be basically you know the uh, data that comes with uh, each of the sensors uh, within the sample. So yeah, so we have a uh, couple of radars. We have one lidar and a couple of cameras as well. So uh, like like what Jacob asked just now, uh, we uh, I'll, I'll show you like how how uh, how you're able to visualize them so that it looks yeah, so it's just not a bunch of words <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, and okay, yeah. And just just before we jump to that, that would uh, I just want to you know bring you guys uh, through the get method again. So the get method is really useful within the new scene staff kit. Uh, uh, you're able to you know use it to get basically uh, a, a lot of the uh, portions of the schema that you saw just now so uh, previously uh, above i was uh, you know uh, using it to get the sample now i'm going to get some sample data uh, yeah i'm going to get the sample data from it so uh, yeah so it's basically very simple it's just get and then uh, you know whatever you want sample data sample scene uh, etc and then the identifier that's associated with it and in this case uh, yeah we're getting the front camera which you can see here and it you know, provides you a whole bunch of information about the data as well. So, you know, uh, where where the data is stored, um, what is the next frame that's uh, associated with it, uh, etc. Okay, and right, and okay, and the last one I just wanted to go through quickly would be the sample annotation, which uh, we also saw up in the schema. So the sample annotation is pretty simple to understand. It's basically uh, the bounding box itself. So uh, yeah, this is what you know. Most people who need like uh, who want to train their machine algorithms would, would use because this would be basically your ground truth. And um, yeah, you can see here it's a uh, you know whole bunch of things. So that this is the position of the bounding box, the size of the bounding box, you know, width, length, height, um, the rotation of that box in three D space. Yeah, and then as well as uh, things like the category. So this is a truck that we are looking at right now. So, so, so it's interesting. So a bounding box is like it's 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 an actual box in three D space, mm -hmm. not not like a, a rectangle, correct? Or does it have the rectangle as well on the image? Ah uh, yes. So uh it's it's basically a cuboid because it's three D and uh 
And later on, when I show you like the visualizations, uh, you can see it like being projected onto the 2D plane. So yeah, that will be quite quite uh, fun to look at as well. Ah, okay. So it, mm -hmm. it, it has this information as well. So you can ask it, for example, where does it show in the image? Uh, yes. Uh, so that comes from like the, the translation uh, uh, piece here. So uh, basically, when you when, with our dev kit, we basically calculate like where where all this is in the uh, in the image. If if you are showing an image, and then it will plot the bounding box uh, according to that. And in three D space, what units do you use? Like meters, centimeters, kilometers? Like um, what? What? How does it? How does it know where in three D space it is? Like there's no the the, the measurements or. Uh, yes. So, uh, as as standard, uh, throughout Nusins, we use uh, meters for the spatial uh, measurements. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, what you see here is basically yeah, four hundred and nine meters from the uh, from the. Okay. So, oh, yeah, one thing I forgot to mention would be this translation is with respect to the global coordinate, which is a uh, uh, a map basically. So, if you can imagine like a map of say Boston or Singapore. Uh, we we define a a, a code, uh, origin zero zero at uh, one of the corners of the map, and basically the translation will mean that you know uh, this this particular object is uh, four hundred nine meters uh, in the x direction uh, from that origin. So when the car moves, then you will everything will like it's it's not called compared to the car, correct? correct. Not compared, it's compared to the, camera. To the map. Mm -hmm. Correct. So yes, you are, you're right, Jacob. So basically, uh, if let's say this truck um, decides to move in the next sample, uh, this this translation uh, would change. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then okay. So I I will skip uh all this once here because uh yeah I think pretty pretty uh self-explanatory in terms of uh, what they do. Um, and also, I want, I want to get into like showing you guys like the exciting part about the dev kit, which is like the visualization methods that that we have. Um, yeah. So okay. So uh, yeah. So for anyone on Colab, um, if you scroll down to the third section, which is called data visualizations, um, this is where basically uh, I'll, I'll show you like what in terms of visualization, what new scenes can do. Uh, so. Just a, a, a quick uh, recap on what we've done so far. So uh, we've looked at the schema of Nusins, um, and then we've used the dev kit to basically uh, pass through uh, the the specific uh, parts of the schema that we, we were taking a look at, like sample, sample data, et cetera, and uh, sample annotations as well. Uh, and now would be basically visual, visualizing all the data. So um, yes, with that, uh, OK. So. Uh, there's this render section uh, underneath uh, under the tutorial uh, under under the section called uh, data visualizations, and uh, yeah, so basically, um, be visualizing data with the new scene staff kit is very simple. Uh, they, they are mostly one liners, so that makes it very easy for you know any any uh, new users to actually pick it up, and it's uh, it's very intuitive in the sense that you know you just need to fit in like a a token, uh, uh, which is basically the identifier. Yeah. It can be like for the sample or uh, sample data, etc. Depending on the method that you're using, as well as telling it, you know, like what what kind of uh, channel uh, you are you're using. So in this case, for example, uh, demonstrate the render point flowing image method. And what this method basically does is, um, you know, having that uh, having that camera image and then projecting the the point cloud. So it could be the lighter point cloud, it could be the radar point cloud uh, onto the image. And this is very useful for um, you know people who work with uh, um, uh, uh, with light algorithms or with light and camera algorithms because uh, you are now able to visualize more effectively like uh, what is going on uh, with the light point cloud. Because as humans, we are not really used to looking at uh, you know point clouds, so having it projected onto an image actually makes it much uh, easier to understand what's going on there. And yeah, so basically it's just yeah running this one liner uh, and that that actually yeah and and the code at the back end just you know it, it this uh, it's able to figure out you know where which uh, point cloud corres uh, which part of point cloud corresponds to the camera image uh, yeah and even like uh, colors the point cloud according to like the distance from the ego vehicle so uh, basically the nearer you are the darker it is and the further it is uh, yeah the lighter it is so uh, this makes it very easy to visualize what's going on. 
and yeah and uh yeah and you can even do things like you know render the intensity for example of that uh lidar lidar point cloud so uh with lidar you know uh when it's um when it's bouncing off certain reflective surface the intensities uh, and, uh can, can differ uh so uh this is quite useful for uh, practitioners who want to use like intensity uh, as a feature within their point cloud when they feed into their machine learning models so you can actually take a look at you know um like for example you can see uh yeah like some of the the points here are more intense than others okay and so we can do the same thing for for the radar uh the, the radar uh the radar is a bit sparser that's why you know you don't see as many points uh but still very useful for yeah people who are working with radar and want to visualize uh, what's going on in the uh like visually when they analyze the data okay and then uh now we can take a look at some of the bounding boxes so we have talked a lot about you know the sample annotations and how they're bounding boxes so now you get to actually visualize them uh uh, with the dev kit and uh, same thing like with most of our render functions within new scenes uh, they are all they are one liner as well so it's just basically uh, you know render sample data very uh, intuitive name uh, and yeah it's just passing in like you know the identifier for the sample uh, the sample data uh, and the camera or, or whatever modality that you that you want uh, in, in there so yeah if you if you just run this it will basically uh display the image associated with the camera that you want and it will draw all the bounding boxes for you so uh you can see here you know you have uh, vehicles um you have barriers you have uh, traffic cones etc and uh, oh just, just a little note like the um, we, we even have them in different colors to tell you that you know this object that's being uh bounded by the box is of a uh, of a certain class so for example um this dark orange here it's a truck uh light orange is a car uh, we have gray for barriers uh, yeah and then traffic cones uh, would be a little darker darker greenish gray kind of thing yeah so so uh, if before we move in is there a way to display more additional information like text you don't have to do it now but can you like say oh this is a car this is a cone and write those as words or something like that Ah, uh, with the so within that kit, we we don't provide that. Uh, but you could it's easily customizable. So for more advanced users, you could actually uh use some of our more advanced methods to basically customize certain uh rendering uh functions that that you may have for your own use case. Oh, so you can actually mod you have to modify code for that, or is it like simple, or you just provide your um, own plugin or? <laughs> So like with your with the the example that you brought up, I think it would be pretty simple to to do basically you know having like a legend of sorts right that, that's that's basically what you want uh yeah uh that would be pretty simple to do um there may be some more advanced use cases, so I have users asking me before like um you know can I display for example um, only objects that are uh dynamic so objects that are moving so uh this, this would be more like advanced use cases of uh the dev kit where you know you you may need to uh combine certain uh methods uh in order to get that um visualization that you want to do okay <laughs> okay so uh what you just saw would be rendering for the cameras uh you can even render for like the lidars that we have so both the lidars and the radars uh and basically it's the same thing so it's the exact same uh, function called render sample data uh, you just need to pass in the uh, you know the, the the appropriate um sensor that you want so uh, in this case i'm going to do both lidar and radar uh and for this uh for for this point clouds uh sample data you know we we have options like uh you know whether you want to aggregate them so aggregation meaning like you, know, you can um aggregate like the 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 for example five five of the data point clouds that are neighboring to each other so you can you can make it a much denser kind of uh, uh visualization if, if that helps you and then you can even like uh lay, lay a map underneath it because looking at a point cloud sometimes can be uh boring so you may want to know like you know where exactly it is uh where exactly it is on the, on the map so you can tell oh it's uh you know yeah the the ego vehicles on the on the on the um, on the road 
uh, you can tell like, oh, you have pedestrians crossing the road here, etc. So it's it's a little useful option to have yeah, for this underlay map uh, uh, parameter. Yeah, and yeah, you have, and you can see the same thing for the radar. Uh, for the radar, you can see like certain lines coming out here. Uh, these are generally like the the velocity uh, data points that are associated with the radar. Uh, yeah, won't I won't go too much into it. Just wanted to show you guys like the visualizations that we can do for all the modalities that we have within the dev kit. Okay, uh, right. And yeah, and you can even zoom into specific um, and uh, specific sample annotations. So uh, basically, previously what you were looking at would be uh, you know uh, the whole sample itself. Um, but for example, you could be interested in maybe only one of the objects that are in this uh, sample. So um, we actually provide similarly another one-liner kind of method which you can use. So it's called render annotation, and this would basically render. Uh, a specific annotation that you choose. So in this case, like uh, we we have a barrier here. Uh, not sure if you can see, it, but it's like yeah, really tiny, far far off in the distance uh, around around this area. So uh, this is very useful if you want to investigate like a given object, uh, and and you know see what's happening, ha ha uh, what what's happening with that object. So uh, yeah, so this is like you can imagine it as going more fine grained into the sample. And uh, the next thing that we have would be actually uh, being able to render an entire scene. So, so far, what uh, you have looked at would be, you know, uh, rendering a sample. So that's uh, static. And then we also gone uh, further down into rendering like the specific uh, sample annotations. So, uh, and then now we're going to go right back up to the, to the scene level and, you know, actually look at uh, uh, look at visualizations for an entire scene. And I'm going to run this one and think, uh, does a video pop up on, on your screens? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, great. So you can see this uh, video right here. Uh, basically, it renders the entire scene for you. Uh, and yeah, it so th that makes it like even easier to like analyze the data uh, from a temporal point of view. So I'm just going to play it again. So uh, yeah, this allows you to see th for the entire twenty seconds, you know what's going on, uh, bonding boxes, what uh, where, where they are, uh, yeah, and and just get a general flavor of the scene. So you can see the construction site. Uh, it's doing a left turn. Uh, yeah, so a uh, uh, richer uh, there's richer information that you can get from uh, yeah, visualizing the the entire scene as opposed to just a sample. It's, it just plays a prepared video, or does it prepare the video uh, with, like, let's say you ask bounding boxes, the bounding boxes. If you want it without, it will show it without. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, yes, uh, you. Yes, I, I think you. If I recall correctly, you would be able to, uh, yeah, choose to uh, render the video without the bounding boxes if you wanted to. Uh, okay. But of course, for more advanced usages, then you may need to customize uh, some of the the code in order to get your specific visualization. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, no worries. And one one last method that I wanted to show everyone would be uh, rendering basically uh, all, all the cameras uh, at, at one go. So uh, that's very useful because um, sometimes uh, users may want to do like a 360 analysis of uh, what's going on in the surroundings. So uh, this is a really fun one to, to actually look at. Um, yeah, so. Uh, I, I hope a video popped out as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is? Uh, yeah. So you can see all six cameras that we have on the Ego vehicle. Uh, so the top one would be the three front cameras. Uh, so front center, front left, front right. Uh, and then the below three are the back cameras. So back center, back left, back right. And yeah, it's it's a it's a really cool uh, visualization. I feel every time I show this to people, they are pretty, pretty uh, yeah, impressed by like, oh, wow, I can see like, Everything at one go, three hundred and sixty vision. <laughs> so yes, a really cool uh, uh, method that we have there. And 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 as always, it's uh, basically a one liner. Yeah, it's just the the render scene method, and you know you pass in the appropriate scene uh, identifier that you want, and you know uh, everything is done for you in the back end. So um, yeah, it's a uh, yeah, and yeah. So basically, that's the uh, the the render scene method. And yeah, 
And in terms of yeah, mm -hmm. what, what I wanted to demo for you guys, uh, that would be yeah, uh, that would be it. Uh, yeah, feel free to ask any questions uh, about the dev kit, about no scenes, about the data, etc. Is this so, just for analyzing driving data, or the, could there uh, be other use cases or, or other uh, data that you can use this library with? Mm -hmm. uh, so in general, uh, so when we came up with the data and the data set as well as the dev kit, uh, we we had the the audience that we had in mind was uh, the autonomous driving uh, community. Uh, but of course, like um, you know, if you if you had some other use cases for it, which uh, you know you can make use of the data that we have, I think yeah, that that would yeah, you you totally be free to to use it. If you were to, uh, how would um, you get more driving data? Is the uh, is there a data set that gets updated over time, or, or would you uh, have to own a, uh, a you know self driving car to acquire that data and then uh, be able to use this library with that data that you then acquire? Ah, I see. Uh, so with the so the data set itself, uh, to answer your first question, uh, it's frozen. So, uh. We have released it for about a few years now, and yeah, we 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 don't change like we we don't add on to to that data just cause um one of the reasons why is because no scenes actually used as a benchmarking uh uh it, it's used as a benchmark uh within the academic community for you know a lot of uh, autonomous driving related papers and we and if we we change the data set right the benchmarking doesn't become consistent uh from paper to paper so we have oh, generally okay. kept it uh, frozen yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you're looking for uh, more data, right? We, what happens is that we're actually going to release another data set called New Plan, and with New Plan, uh, yeah, we're going to have like uh, on the order of like one thousand five hundred hours of uh, data. So that would be like even more data for, for for you to play with if you're looking for an even bigger data set. Okay, cool. Thank you. I want to expand on this. Uh, Bear with me here. It's like the John gave a nice idea. Let's say I'm going into a party and I want to, you know, I, I wear a hat with cameras that show, don't have light later, but like show all the people around me. And later on, I want to, you know, mark all those people and like analyze whatever I did or where I went or stuff like that. And I want, you know, to label all the bounding boxes around the people and give them names. This is John, this is Jeff and so on and so forth. Is this something that I can reuse the library with my own data? Oh yeah, uh, totally. So we have users reaching out to us before, like you know, they 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 say, oh, I, I have my own data set, uh, but I would re really love to apply the new scenes dev kit on top of my own data set. Uh, so it's totally doable, uh, Jacob. Uh, I guess the only caveat is that you need to have your data in the format at same as new scenes. So. You will need to have like uh you you need you will need to follow that schema that we talked about um at the at the start so um yeah so you will need to basically have you know uh your scenes your samples your sample data etc uh yeah and then uh have them organized in that same manner as uh new scenes and uh what, what so that, that's the tough the tough work part uh, but once you have that um yeah you can just run the dev kit on top of it. Interesting. So what you're telling me is that new scenes, and thanks for John for point, pointing it out, like it's his idea basically. But basically, you, and, and it says something that you at the beginning said, new scenes is two things. First, the data, then the, the, the uh, software itself. So, the dev kit. Yeah, dev kit. If I, so you're telling me I can use the software with different types of data for new applications. So this is one thing. The other thing is you're telling me the data that we accumulated is a benchmark that is used for other for other software, like to do other things by by autonomous uh, vehicle in the autonomous vehicle uh, domain. So you, those two things are each have a value of its own, but together you're getting a little bit more. Am I correct? Yes, I, I think you sum it up. Uh, sum it up really nicely, Jacob. Yeah, correct. So uh, yes, so uh, with new scenes like. We, uh, it's being used as a benchmark, uh, not not really for software, but more for like um, papers. So like, uh, you know, when people do some research into, let's say, a new LIDAR based uh, algorithm, right? Uh, they would use new scenes to benchmark it. And uh, yeah, and then that allows you to compare with like uh, uh, work that came before you and be like, oh, you know, I've reached a new state of the art or, you know, I've improved uh, uh, detection in pedestrians, something like that. 
and and on this note right uh, if if i can show you guys um uh, something so uh with nuisance uh we actually have our benchmarks uh public so uh I, I have a, a leaderboard open right now. Uh, is that appearing on your screens? Yeah, yeah, it's showing. You're mm -hmm. showing some using detection task. Yes, uh, yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, so we, so uh, one of the the benchmarks that we we have uh, for new scenes would be the, uh, the 3D object detection task. And basically, you can see here uh, is this leaderboard where we, yeah, where, you know, uh, the, the public, so they can be from academia, they can be from industry, uh, they actually uh, submit their their models or, or rather the predictions from their models to us. And we actually, uh, yeah, we actually benchmark it, uh, you know, on, on this leaderboard. So um, we, let me see, yeah. So uh, you can, yeah, so you can see we have a whole bunch of uh, methods here uh, submitted from the public. And yeah, and this gives you an uh, idea of you know how well your your own method uh, is doing against like the the what's out there, and yeah, and and you can even benchmark it by for example uh, modalities, right? So uh, light object detection that's something that's really popular these days as well. You can you can filter this leaderboard. Uh, you can yeah, and then you can see how well you're doing. So for example, you know if you are team large kernel, then you know much kudos to you. You are like currently the top performing uh, method uh, on new scenes. Um, yeah, so yes. So yeah, just, just a little sidetrack into uh, since we were talking about benchmarking. <laughs> so, so is it comparing the benchmark, meaning it compares whatever the AI figured out to be like the bounding boxes and what they are compared to what new scenes actually wrote down that they are? Uh, yes. So yeah, yeah, exactly right, Jacob. So basically, each method is basically it can be like a, a yeah AI based method, and the AI will basically predict uh, you know what are the bounding boxes for the particular sample, and then we will basically compare it against the ground truth, which comes from our data set, and then uh, yeah, see how well that that uh, prediction is uh, relative to the to the ground truth. Interesting. So, who can participate in this? Like, let's say we have a genius amongst us here in the in the in the meetup, and mm -hmm. someone here wants to say, "Oh, I have all those great ideas. I want to implement them on driverless cars." So, how mm -hmm. do they start? Like, what what would you suggest to such a person or someone who's absolute beginner and wants to do something with it? What's the first steps you suggest for such a person to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so to, to start off, uh, the, the benchmarking, uh, or rather like we call them, uh, like the competition. So in this case, it's like the, the detection, uh, task competition, uh, they're all free and they're open all year round. So, uh, yeah. In, so you don't need to worry too much about like, oh, like, do I need to sign up at a particular time? Do I need to register? Do I need to pay, et cetera. It's completely free to the public. Um, you can submit your methods anytime. So even if you take like, I don't know, five years to work on your method, you don't have to worry, like you can submit it at the, at the end of that. Uh, so yeah, so so that's the, uh, the the first things first. And then in terms of like, I, I guess how 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 you could approach it, um, I would say like, you know, you could start off with like a, a, a nice baseline, uh, point pillars, uh, basically, uh, which is released by uh, our, by emotional a couple of years back. Uh, that, that that was what we use as our initial baseline. Uh, so as a as a totally new beginner, you could begin with that. Take take like a, a baseline that you like, and then kind of you know start tweaking it. You can, for example, change activation functions. You can maybe try making your network deeper. You can try different detection hits, stuff like that. And you know, tick 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 that baseline until you get something that you are quite happy with. And then yeah, and then submit it submit it to our benchmarking server, and yeah. See, see your results on it. <laughs> so it's from of promotional.com, correct? Uh, oh, the benchmarking server? Yeah, uh, the, uh, like, how do I, how, how do I do it? How do I study, add to the competition? What's the link here would be? Yes, okay. Uh, so I, I will post I'll put news. this um, in the chat. Yeah, if someone is interested, just so people can know how to join. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So I, I left the link in the chat, and if you scroll down to this point, uh, this to this uh, part called participation, uh, we have a link to the evaluation server. So you just need to um, open it up, and yeah, and then that brings you to the uh, evaluation server, and then you can do all your submissions. So uh, yeah, there's this participate tab. Yeah, you, you need to log in to to do this. Uh, but similarly, it's a uh, free to sign up and account on Eval AI. That's the server that we use, uh, the platform that we use. 
yeah, so uh, you can then just um, yeah, uh, upload your predictions of your model to the server for benchmarking. Very nice. Uh, and what types of insights with this data do you think that uh, there might currently be a lack of that's that the that might be a more in demand or you know it's more sought after type of like uh, type insights from it. Insights to this data, uh, like insights. Um, you mean like what kind of additional data like you uh, the public would like or? Uh, almost like um, if you could almost uh, find out something more with it um, that would be more desired. Like what's um, you know take it to the next level and you know really you know gather more information from that data set what would that information be what would be like the next you know a level beyond uh what it currently is at like what would be the next what more what would be the next uh you know level of insight you could gather from that data site data set i see uh i okay insights from this data set so i think one of the interesting things that uh that you can observe within no scenes would be, let's see if I have an example here. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. Ah, here. So, um, if you, so, uh, in machine learning, there is this, um, one of this, uh, there's this phenomenon, I think called, like the long tail problem. So basically, uh, the problem is like, um, you know, for certain classes that you're trying to detect or classify, uh, there is, uh, an abundance of the data. So you can imagine, let's say, if you want to um, detect animals right, in the real world, uh, you could easily get like many examples of dogs, of cats, uh, etc. Uh, but on the other end of the spectrum, uh, it may be uh, you you would have some classes which you, are, you desire to detect, but would not would but which you don't have enough data for. So maybe say uh, on this spectrum of animals, right? Like maybe you know it's hard to get. Um, examples, training examples of, let's say, koala bears or kangaroos, or something like that. Uh, yeah, uh, practically non-existent in Singapore, <laughs> those animals. So if you wanted to train a, a detector for that, uh, it would be uh, pretty tough. And you can observe that long tail problem in new scenes as well, right? So um, if you look at, uh, at N, right? So N just means like the number of uh, sample annotations that we have. And you can see things, classes like adults, um, various uh, traffic cones, uh, and of course, cars. Uh, these are very uh, common objects which um, you would e be able to easily train an object detector on. Uh, but when it comes down to detecting something, let's say, like trailers uh, or bendy buses, uh, this becomes uh, really, really tricky because uh, you, you know, th this, these are objects that are on the other end of the spectrum, uh, which is the long tail end of the spectrum, where you have very little training examples and you uh and and it's a it's a research topic as well like you know figuring out what is a, a good methodology that allows you to both detect your common classes uh as well as your uh long long tail uh, classes so i think that's something interesting in terms of insights and and uh research and development that could come from uh new scenes as well yeah you summarized you. exactly yeah that was, that was nice. good thank you um, are there any more questions to Wei? Could I, if I were to uh, take my phone and record a video with my phone, could I then take that video footage and plug it into Nuisance and then um, use that to detect objects Oh, uh, you mean, so, uh, if I understand correctly, you're saying like, um, you, you would train like a model using new scenes and try to detect, uh, stuff on your phone uh, on video taken by your phone. Yes. I, oh, I, 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 I think that there's a disconnect here. One second. Uh, I, I think I get the, what John is asking. He's asking if I can use the data with the new scene software, but I think he assumed new scenes detects the image, like detect uh, the bounding boxes on the image. Uh, yeah, so, you know, the data would be from my phone and I would have a, you know, capture some video of my phone and then I would use that video footage and then I would use the, 
uh, nuisance, the library, not, I wouldn't use the, the data piece of the library, but more of the uh, algorithm piece of it to then, uh, you know, to create those bounding boxes with that video data that I have. So, so would that be, uh, would I be able to just use the, my phone generated video or, or is there some other kind of, you know, qualification for that, that data? Oh, oh, I I see. Oh, uh, okay. So just to clarify, right? Um, the new scenes dev kit doesn't have like an algorithm that you know that that um figures like figures out that bounding boxes. Uh, so what what we actually do is like we we have um annotators, so like human annotators to you know manually annotate the boxes because we we want like ground truth, like a, a golden ground truth. So um, yeah. So but to to your point, right, John? Uh, what you could do is you know with your uh, with the video that you've captured on your phone camera, uh, you could, you know, use something like a point pillars or like, uh, yeah, some, some AI algorithm that is open source out there that uh, you could then use to draw those bounding boxes. And then what you could do is basically apply the no scenes dev kit, uh, assuming like, you know, your bounding boxes are all in the same format as no scenes, uh, you could apply the dev kit on top of it to visualize, uh, uh, all, all that data that, uh, your phone camera has and also um, the bounding boxes that were predicted by the AI algorithm that you uh, use to label your your phone camera videos. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. so, so in short, the AI is something that you don't provide. You just provide the ground truth and the data to run the AI and the ground truth meaning what the AI should predict. You basically Thanks. kind of test suit for the AI, if I'm explaining this correctly. Correct. Yes, exactly right. So yeah, we, we, we serve as the benchmark. So yeah, we, we provide the ground truth. Yeah. And then, you know, you can come in with your AI algorithms and, and figure out where, where you are on the leaderboard. <laughs> okay. Mm. But, but you can still take your phone and if you have AI to do those like bounding boxes and annotations or, or a human that will do this, then you can use the new scenes library to actually go and create a benchmark for your own scene. Yes, correct. Yeah, you can use it to visualize, you can use it to, you know, uh, move through your data and everything. Yeah. So, so it's, uh, yeah, it, it, as long as you have it in the same format as, as no scenes, uh, yeah, you can easily apply the, the dev kit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well summarized, Jacob. Um, any more questions to work it? I saw some stuff in the chat. I'm, I'm not sure if I addressed. Um, let's see. Uh, um, I'm looking. Some people are. Volunteers. No, I don't see questions. Uh, uh, oh, I think John uh, was asking hardware. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I was uh, wondering just uh, early on about the uh, the self driving uh, hardware that was used for the on the vehicle for the uh, I guess the uh, training data for I guess the, for the standard. I think you mentioned the vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I yeah, that's a good question. So I can show you guys. So uh, I have the no scenes web page open here, and underneath uh, data collection. Um, we actually list out uh, this, uh, all, all the sensors that we use uh, and also the car type. So uh, to your question, John, about uh, uh, okay. hardware right? uh, yeah, for the LiDAR, yeah, uh, Velodyne. Perfect right there. Yeah, that maps yeah. everything. Uh, yes, yeah. It's a, it's a really nice summary page. Like, and yeah, we even provide like some uh, tech specs of each sensor if you're interested. Do you know of any uh, tools that, um, so if you have your own data set, for, uh, you want to format it to be more compatible with the uh, nuisance, uh, do you know any tools that um, are methods to use to format your data? Oh, format your data. Mm. Offhand, I can't think of any, but do do let me see if I can find anything. I I, I could let you know. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I could send something to Jacob or, or yourself as well if you give me a contact. And then, uh, yeah, let me poke around. Okay. Thank uh, you. If you have, if you have an application, uh, contact me, and I'll make the, I'll make sure that the information flows. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I thank think, you. Ah, uh, uh, no, Richard. Ah, uh, uh, I see you have another question here about ML algos. Um, right. So, 
uh, one of the, let me see if we can pull it up. So um, like what I mentioned during my talk as well, um, one of the uh, models that we actually released uh, as part of a baseline for benchmarking was something called pointless. Uh, yeah, so you can, this is basically uh, work done with uh, done by Motional. Uh, we used to be called uh, Autonomy uh, under Active. Um, but yeah, so this was the um, the baseline that we released uh, along with Nusins previously. It's called Point Pillars. And I think there is like some sort of open source code somewhere out there that you can actually pull and try. Oh yeah, I think there's something here. Yeah. Uh, so yes, there's, uh, there's a paper here which you can uh, check out in terms of the details. Uh, I'll leave it in the chat as well. Oops, sorry. So the first link would be for the paper. And then yeah, and then there's some code here as well, which you can check out. So this is one one of those uh, yeah, the, this is one of the M algorithms that you can use. Um but of course there's like so much more out there this day since we released the uh, the initial baseline. And uh, all of them you could basically find on our uh, leaderboard. So uh, for detection, basically yeah, you can you can pick any of these uh, methods. And I think uh, as far as possible, uh, yeah, we we encourage you know those people, uh, the users or participants, something to our leaderboard to provide you know some sort of code, some sort of paper, so that people understand the uh, their method a bit better, and that you know benefits like the community as a whole. So um, yeah, uh, yeah, we have easily like I think more than 100 methods that you could uh, uh, check out in terms of uh, algorithms that uh, use on the data. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'm going to check out those resources too. Hmm. Well, <laughs> it seems just about some quite some interest here. Uh, why kids? Uh, unless someone hmm. has a pressing question, then perhaps we should finish it. So pressing questions going once. Oh, I think um, Sohan Solo has one. I think this is the last question, probably. Okay. Uh, are new bounding boxes generated for each camera, or is that data transfer between cameras? Uh, okay, so basically how the annotation for Nusins is done. Uh, so as, as you have observed, um, we have cameras that surround the eco vehicle uh, 360 degrees. And this, uh, so the bounding boxes are... Uh, uh, are firstly human annotated, so uh, they are not uh, generated. And the and so basically, if you imagine like you have a car, and that car is um, split between let's say like the front camera, the front center camera, and the and the front right camera. Uh, basically, they 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 both get the same uh, bounding box. So there is no like kind of overlap or transfer um, uh, data between like the two. So it's it's always one single ground truth if it's one one car that's uh, across two cameras uh it's labeled as you know the, with one unique uh identified box I, I hope that answers uh your question so it's the same bounding box for all the cameras if it just shows differently projected correct yes so like yeah depending on what view you look at that that box may or may not be in that frame or and it may or not be partially in that frame yeah Okay, so okay. pressing questions going once, question questions going twice. No more questions, I assume. Okay, if that case, I want to thank you again for something very, for this very interesting talk. I hope that uh, you enjoyed it as much as we did. And I believe there'll be more interests even later. So uh, I want everyone to thank you. So please unmute yourself, make some noise or some put some reactions, yeah. whatever. Uh, so, yeah. Thank, thank, thanks so much, everyone. It was a super fun thank to you. be here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you. Yes, thank thank you. Thanks very much for, for having me. Uh, it was super fun to be able to share with you guys uh, the work that we are doing. And I, I really love the questions. Like, really insightful and interesting questions that, uh, I, that, that I've got. Yeah, so thanks very much, everyone. For, uh, okay. So, uh,
Uh, we're going to stop the recording. Don't go away. Okay.